Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show off the basics of logging with Python. It's really easy to implement and it makes your code look that much more professional. It's something you should be including in all your Python scripts. So let's go ahead and just hop into it right now. So I have a script created here and the first thing I need to do for logging is import the logging module. And then after that, anywhere in my script where I want a logging message, I just type logging dot warning. And then within this, I'm going to put, this is a warning message. And it works exactly the same as the print statement. So let's go ahead and run this code here. See, when we run the script, it is giving a warning message. And the output is exactly what we have within the warning message. Perfect. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and have a look at the logging levels next. So I'm going to copy and paste some code here. And these are all the logging levels. Let's go ahead and run this code. And you'll notice it only printed three lines there. It printed the warning, the error, and the critical message, but the info and debug are not displaying. And this is what's known as the logging level. Python has different levels in which it logs messages at. And the logging level that you set the logging configuration at, it will print out those logging messages and anything above. So by default, the logging level is set at warning, so it'll print out warning, errors, and critical messages. Now, if we want to change this default, all we need to do is modify the logging configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll say logging.basicconfig, and you can see it's auto-completing here. And then we're going to send in the parameter level equals logging.debug. And just make sure you're using the proper capitalization there. And now when I rerun, you can see that all five messages are displayed. And you can play around with this. So if you wanted just critical messages to be shown, you could go critical. And now it only shows the critical messages. So you can see how good this can be for troubleshooting. You could have only critical messages show up when the application's in production. And when an issue is reported, you could set the logging level down to debug to troubleshoot. So it's very good for categorizing messages within your application. So one thing that I always like to change from the default is the formatting of your logging messages. Just having the debug and the username and then the message isn't enough for me. I like to have timestamps in there. So let's go ahead and add in a timestamp. I'm going to bring this down to a new line here. Add another line here. And I'm just going to paste in some code here. And this is the formatting that I usually use. You can look this formatting up online in the documentation and set it however you want. But I find this way works the best. We have a timestamp, we have the logging level, and then the message that's contained. So let's go ahead and run this. And this actually requires some additional styling. So we're going to do a new line, do style equals, and then we're going to do a curly bracket. And we will rerun this. And now we can see that the timestamps are there and the debug message and then the actual message. So now it's already looking quite a bit better. Now, one thing that's very common is not logging to the console, but logging to a file. So it's very easy to add that functionality. All you need to do is add in the file name, mylog.log, and then you set the file mode. So I'm going to set it to write, and this is very similar to how you set the open file permissions within Python. If you set it to write, it's going to write over the log file each time you run the script. But if you set it to append, then it's just going to keep appending to that log file. So with our application, we're fine with it using the same log file every time and writing over it. So let's go ahead and run this. You notice there's no output to the console, but if I do an ls, you can see that there is a log file. And if I cat that out, it contains all the log messages. So very easy to go from standard output to a log file. And if you wanted to name this log file after your application, you can do that using the file name method. 
So instead of doing this, I'm going to go spent s log. And then I'm going to go percent double underscore file double underscore. And then once I have that, I want to take away the last two characters. So this name right here is the application name, which is myapp.py. So I actually want to remove the dot .py and change it to log. So I'm going to take away the last two characters. And this is just a simple way to do it. There's many different ways to do this, but this is the quick and dirty way to do it. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to rerun our script. And we can see that that created this new file called myapp.log. And when we look at it, Oop, I had the wrong thing in my clipboard there. My app.log. It contains all of the logging messages. So moving on, let's go ahead and uh, just play around with this. I'm going to change the debug level back to just critical. Let's do a variable here. So we'll go username equals Brad. And then within the logging message, maybe we'll go there was an error with user and then we're going to go percent s percent username and basically this is the same way as you would print out a variable in a print statement it works exactly the same if you like printing your variables out in different ways they all work the same way i'm just showing you this one way because i tend to do it like this so let's go ahead and run our script and let's check our log file. So my app dot log, and you can see just the critical message is printing and it said there was an error with user Brad. Perfect. So just to make this more production like, let's go ahead and create a real error here. So I'm gonna go A equals two and then B equals zero. And we're going to divide by these numbers. And as you probably know, computers have issues with dividing by zero. So we're going to use a try and accept block here. So we'll go try my sum equals a divided by b. And then after that, we're going to have an exception block. So we'll go accept exception as e. And then we'll do a logging.critical. We'll say exception occurred and then we're going to go exact info equals true and we will run our script but before we do that i'm going to comment out these lines because i don't want to log to the file i'm fine with logging to standard output and i'll take that out do this and you can see our error occurred, exception occurred, trace back, blah, 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 blah. And it tells you the exact same thing. So if you're doing try and accept blocks, using the logging module is great because it gives you this professional looking timestamp and logging level message. And then you can send out the exact trace back info over here, which gives us a lot of information for troubleshooting. I know the exact line that caused the issue, it's line 22. So when my application runs into an error, there won't be a lot of troubleshooting. I'll know exactly where to look. Anyways, that's all I have for this video in regards to Python logging. I hope you found it helpful. If you're looking to learn more about Python or DevOps in general, please check out my other videos on this channel. And thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.